Hello everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, reporting from behind enemy lines somewhere in the South Pacific. Today I'm bringing you a review of Arma 3 for the PC. Let's see if this game is as good as a line of cocaine, or if it's just sniffing $2 Walmart paint behind your uncle's porch. Arma 3 is a murder simulator wrapped up to look like a heavy military simulator, but let's be honest, the game likes to kill you. Arma 3 is the digital equivalent of buying a cottonmouth cobra, naming it Bill, then putting it down your drawers, and going to a 50s dance recital and expecting to live. This is the great mamba of military sims let's see how it fares that's the first death of about a hundred in this review now a little bit of history arma 3 is the third in the army series go figure that would explain the number but it's not all quite as clear-cut as that because basically it's also an extension of the old operation flashpoint games from yonder times so i like to think of it as like the fifth or sixth game in the series it's a military shooter walking into a room full of other shooters and telling them to shit at Tiffany Cufflinks before it seriously fucks them up. Nothing in Arma 3 is casual. But that doesn't mean it's hard to get into, that just means the game alerts you fairly early that shit is about to get serious and if you don't buck up, you're gonna buckle. Bohemia Interactive makes the game a group of men and women who I assume, unless they've mustered out, corner the market on hardcore. Let's see how it does. First up is graphics. Arma 3 is one part gorgeous, one part what the fuck, with an insane engine with hyper customization options for how it looks. Sun drenched villages, detailed uniforms, snowy mountaintops, huge sprawling oceans, all hampered by a world of characters that appear to be doing one of two things taking a very dry poop or suffering from Bell's palsy. The facial animation and overall look of the characters has always been rough, but the game's divide just seems to be getting bigger now. The way the game plays, you don't notice this as much as you're sometimes shooting people from hundreds of yards away, but playing multiplayer and gathering together, or what have you, can be shocking and have you reaching for aspirin or a doctor's telephone number so that you can minimize the damage everyone seems to be having to their faces. That being said, the world is an empty but gorgeous affair, and props to these guys, almost everything in the world is enterable. Now, not that you'll want to, because it's going to be a chair and nothing really inside the building, but that's not what the game is about. It's set pieces. It also has amazingly detailed vehicles of all kinds, land, water, air, guns modeled down to their most minute points. The guys concentrate on the military aspect and not the social one within these games. And in all honesty, it makes sense, but it can be a bit disturbing. Sound, music, and voice. I've had a problem with the sound effects since the original Operation Flashpoint, and I still do. While there's an amazing accuracy in the guns, the land vehicles always sound like snowmobiles just sloshing around on wet ice while the planes, helicopters, and boats fare far better. Explosions are okay to good, but still don't have that resonant bang that you expect. However, their accuracy in using the delay option means that you get a very real sense of distance when an explosion goes off half a mile away and takes a bit for the sound to get to you. It's a trade-off at times, but I'm okay with it. Music? Well, there is some, and it's subdued, but most of the time nothing is playing because it's a military sim where listening is life, and having Nickelback playing while you're in a gun battle makes less sense than the sentence I just said. Half a click bearing 285 voice bravo go to that tree the less said about the voices the better it's better than past games but it's still a random assortment of words that's parsed and spoke by the computer to make sense in the moment instead you just quickly assume everybody in the game suffers from throat cancer gameplay the meat and potatoes of arma 3 is that it's a military sim with no punches pulled that means newcomers might feel headshot right away if that's you wait don't go i'll cover some helpful advice in a moment back to gameplay itself Arma 3 is a no-level loading monster battle simulator with advanced options for helicopter insertions, raids, tank battles, underwater exploration, lethal combat, and stealth all mixed into one. Once you get it, folks, you get it. The game and its engine can handle just about anything, and the high lethality means teamwork is a must, and good planning is as important as remembering that you should not sit down on cheese graters. It's gunfights, it's sneaking across 300 yards of a mountainside, never knowing if an enemy is watching you. It's dropping J-dams on an enemy position, then landing, then humping it to that location to clear out enemies. The game doesn't feed you anything, not a thing. In fact, this game basically just sits back, crosses its arms, and says, come at me, little camper. And when you do, failure is guaranteed and success is fleeting. But as you are playing, success occurs more and more often. Real world skills are learned and slowly the game allows you in. And from that point on, it's basically endless. So how is it endless? Well, this spot is for newcomers as well. The game comes with an editor that is both amazingly easy to use and DARPA level complex. If you're new to it, just open up the editor, click on an island, click to add yourself, then click to add an enemy, change their appearance location and hit play. Boom, you have an enemy randomly placed 
You can play five or ten times. Trust me, you can learn more by doing that than almost anything in the game. The game also comes with some side scenarios that are good as well. They're sort of mini missions that teach you the basics of the game. But the editor is the bread and butter and the money shot of the Arma series and always has been. It's hyper complex but ultimately rewarding if you get a grasp on it. And legions of fans have created missions, islands, add-ons, and so forth, basically expanding the very lean original offering the game comes with into a growing database of content. This is sort of the equivalent of giving someone one super bionic leg and expecting them not to run in circles though, because frankly, the game is lean as fuck, and here's why. Because they didn't include the main game with the game. So yeah, that's sort of like showing up at the prom without the date you invited, but you bought flowers and paid for a limo. Then they have the gall to post on their website and on Steam that the coming campaign will come in chapters and be free. Free. Bravo down, motherfucker. Your version of free is everyone else's version of required, and you did a horrible disservice throwing a game like Arma, already known for being difficult to get into, out into the wild without a campaign. That is head injury levels of stupid. There is no excuse, explanation, or requirement that will ever get me to change my mind. So what do you get with Arma 3? I'm not going to lie to you. This is the girlfriend that you fight months for, that you act your best for, you dress up for, strive to impress while your friends tease you mercilessly and can't figure out what you see in her. But once it clicks, it clicks and the romance is hot and heavy. I can't explain the sheer nervous feeling I got while scouting out some woods before coming up on a bunker. Every single tree could be an enemy, every sound could be an approaching vehicle. There's nothing simple about it, nothing at all. It stomps COD and Battlefield in terms of sheer size, complexity, and tension. They wish they had it, while well, Arma 3 wishes it had their pick up and play style. And the fact that there is no main campaign is criminal. At least making a level like this only takes seconds. God damn, I drive like old people, fuck. I'm just waiting to see if these guys have any more amazing plans. Hey, we're releasing another plane with half the controls. The other half of the controls will come later for free. Do I sound bitter? Yep. That's because as a fan, I would have liked to have seen them get more fans, not stand on the shoulders of their original ones. The game doesn't have the chops to sell itself without a campaign. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or don't download rating scale. This is a don't buy. Wait for the campaign. Wait for all of the free campaign and chapters to be downloaded before you buy it. I will be playing it, but I certainly can't suggest anyone else do so. Also, this thing requires a pretty good rig, so if you're running some kind of Walmart special sold to you by a blue shirt, wait it out, see if a patch fixes some of the performance issues. But sadly, folks, it's just too lean and too complex for me to suggest to anyone but the most hardcore fans. And as a hardcore fan who got into the beta, even I feel ripped off by their announcement they weren't going to release the game with the game inside it. Going to a supermarket and getting a bag and leaving without groceries inside is not shopping. It's just being charged for the fucking bag. Someday in the future, I'll re-review this when it's a complete games in the eyes of, you know, the gamers. So this is Kara from Angry Centaur Gaming. If you liked the video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. Share it and comment if you can. Just remember that sometimes free isn't free. Delta, go to that computer. Delta, end review. Peace out, bitches. God damn it, I just noticed all the fires look the same. Everybody is dead. It's like fire teepees. Reminds me of Iraq oil fires. Jesus, that's crazy. I think everybody's dead. Once again, empty world. Just all by myself. End in that. Machine gunner, 100 meters front. God damn, that guy has me pinned down. What the fuck? Aha, wait. Is that you? Oh, oh, sorry about your car, dude. 